Pimpy Man is back. Oh, I'm getting tired. Jay Force, try it again. Oh my God, the man got messed up. This is a five out of freaking five. It is beat making time. Next week is E3 week. My album comes out next week. I have to limp it. Oh, look at that. Oh my God. This is your point. Alright, ladies and gentlemen of the YouTube citizens, y'all know who this is. This is your boy Dash the True Inferno. <laughs> and I'm back with another Overwatch gameplay. Now, before we get on with this topic, I just want to let you guys know that the Dashy mixtape year 3022 is out now. Head on over to trueinferno.bandcamp.com to pick that joint up for absolutely free. So for those of you who tried to do it but was scared off by the buy now fiasco and didn't scroll down to see how to get it for free for some dumb reason, I'm going to explain it to y'all how to get it for free. So, yes, you click on buy now. Do not let that turn you away. You click on buy now. After you click on buy now, a small window will pop up. And in that window, it will ask you the amount you want to pay for. All you do is hit zero, not zero dot zero zero or zero zero dot zero zero, just zero, and it will instantly recognize that you want this album for or mixtape rather for free. So and then I think yeah, it will ask for your email, so because I think it will send it to your email if memory serves it correctly. But if it don't, then they'll give you a link right there. If it do, then just give me your email and they'll email it to you. Um. Again, I, I forgot which way they're going to go, whether the link or the email. But either way, that's how you get it for free. Dashies, year 3022. Also, if you just want to listen to it, we got the DJ edition on my YouTube channel. You can um check that out as well. So, without the ray, let's get on with today's topic. Now, today's topic is interesting because... I keep pushing this back and back and back. And the reason why I'm doing it now is because of a video I saw on Sunday, this past Sunday, by Review Tech USA. So basically, he did a video that caught my eyes, and it was about how GameStop is closing around, I forgot the exact number. I know it's in the 200s. It's between 200 and 300. They are closing their stores by that number, 200 to 300 um, stores. So... I'm watching the video. I watched the whole thing, by the way. And he said something very interesting. He said, one of the reasons why... I, well, first off, you're probably wondering why they're closing two to 300 stores. But let me point this out to you. This is only 2 to 3% of their stores worldwide that they're closing. So you're probably wondering why is that a concern. Because you're supposed to be opening stores, creating stores, not closing them down. That's why it's a bit of a concern. And... Review Tech USA, one of his um, opinion is why, on regards to why GameStop closing their stores now, is because everybody, aside from everybody trying to go to Best Buy, Walmart, Target, whatever, which is pretty dumb in my opinion, but everybody is, or, you know, most people are downloading their games. And I'm like, hmm, that's a reason. I'm going to have to um, challenge him on that. So, this is a topic I've been meaning to do for many months, but other topics took significance over this one. And actually, I was going to talk about LeVar Bell this week. Well, I'm going to push that next week. So, here we go. Digital copies versus physical copies. Which one should you roll with? So, in this one, I'm going to just list you guys the pros and mentioning the cons of going either digital or physical. So, by listing the pros of going digital, at the same time, I'll be listing the cons of going physical and vice versa. So, with that said, let's get into it. Starting off with the more modern one, digital uh, copies. And I'm not counting that as a pro be just because everybody else do it. That can also be a con. You know the old saying, if somebody, if everybody jump off a bridge, would you do it too? So, yeah, the fact that it is the modern way to go and everybody's doing it, no, that is not a pro. It could, and it's not a con either. It's just a fact. Or, you know, it's uh, not a fact, but it's just a... Uh, God, I don't have the exact numbers or whether that's a fact or not. But, you know, it's something that a lot of people, a lot of um, publishers, you know, article publishers or whatever, are mentioning. So, there you go. So, let's start off with the digital copies. So, one pro of going digital is you don't have to raise gas to go to the store and pick up your game. That's right. You just chill at home and buy your game, really. So, you don't have to. If you got a car, 
You don't have to waste gas to drive anywhere. Not not just GameStop, Best Buy, Target, Walmart, anywhere. It, you just share your crib. So, yeah, that's one good thing about going digital. Which brings me to another good thing about going digital. No wasting time to buy the game. So, yeah, instead of going to games, driving, or taking the bus, or wherever method of transportation, somebody takes you there, which is still wasting time. I am mean, not wasting time, with consistent um, of using time. Then you got to go in and stand in a line if there is one. Again, that's more time. And then you got to get rang up. Again, that's more time. And then you got to go back home. Again, that's more time. So, with going digital, all that time went down the drain. I mean, not went down the drain. It's like, what's the word I'm looking for? Isn't used up, basically. So... Yeah, I mean, there's a little bit of time that you had to buy the game online, but outside of that, and he probably thinking, but wait a minute, you had to download and install the game. Well, you have to do the same thing for a physical copy, so that time equals out. But yeah, you save a lot of time buying a video game um, digitally. So now then, let's move on to the next pro for digital games. No changing disc. Now, this is a small pro right here, because like, if you, I will admit, it is annoying. Like, if you're spending the whole day playing video games and you don't want to play the same game, you have to get up or whatever, take the disc out and put another one in. So, yeah, that could be a bit of a um, nuisance. Well, all you got to do with the controller, just move it around to pick the game you want to play, and boom, you're all set. So, there you go with that. Not much of a major pro. You just uh, This is for people who like to be lazy, basically. So, there you go with that. And moving on now to... The next pro is better for the environment. Now, granted, yes, you can put a lot of stuff in disc nowadays, but why even make them? You know, why? You know, I don't know what is used to make a disc of any kind, whether it's Blu-ray, regular CD, you know, whatever. I don't know, but I'm pretty sure it involved harming the environment. So, yeah. So, we're going digital. There's nothing used to make your purchase. So, yeah, there you go with that. Now, another pro in regards to going digital is you can share them with your online friends. Now, when I say that, I don't mean online friends who just so happen at the same time to be your next door neighbor or live in the same city as you know, not that. I'm talking about those who don't live close to you. I'll give you the perfect example. Back in the day when I was playing COD on a regular basis on the PS3, uh, my homeboy Cloud would ask me for, because I would get the season pass or the DLCs or whatever. He would ask me for the DLCs. I'm like, yeah. So I would create a password specifically for him. He would log into my account, download the passwords on his um system, and then that's it. So, yeah, you can do that with your online friends. But it's better if you do it with your online friends that don't live close to you. Because I'll get into that later. Well, no, because... If they do live close to you, all you got to do is just walk over or have them walk over to you or come to you say, yeah, I want that. Let me buy that game. Okay, cool. Bam. There you go. <laughs> now, the last pro that I came up with, and this one isn't a major one. It's a really minor one, is that your digital version of the game will not suffer any physical, physical damage. So, what that means is, you, you won't have to worry about a cracked disc. You won't have to worry about it being scratched because it's digital. But at the, the reason why it's so minor, though, is because, yeah, you won't, have, it's, you won't suffer any physical damages. But at the same time, you could suffer internal damages. Like, for example, you know, a bug in your system. You know, the game is, uh, is flawed. Like, you know, it's digitally flawed and things of that nature and your get your sister could be hacked and on the Wii U like oh you know something could happen to your system like even though your game can't suffer physical damage your system can and if that was the case for the Wii U and you had to get a brand new one and you download the games on there then every downloaded game on that system is gone like you have to rebuy it it's so stupid that's the only exception but for the PS4 and the Xbox one I'm, especially for the PS4, I know you can do that there. But for the Xbox One, I'm pretty sure you can re-download your games that you bought because they have like a history and things of that nature. So there you go with that, with the digital versions. Now let's get on with the physical versions. 
So with the physical copy, you can be a collector. So this is mostly for those old school games, you know, uh, like Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Nintendo 64, Sega Genesis, PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2, and things of that nature. So, yeah, you can be a collector. You know, there's some people that like to collect this stuff. And games is one of them. So you can't knock them for that. Another thing that is good for uh, another con, not a con, a pro, excuse me, for physical games is you can, sh like like I said earlier, you can share them with your um, friends. So, again, your next door neighbor, your classmate, you know, well, as long as it ain't an online classmate, you know, somebody who is really close to you, you can share them with them. Just give them the physical copy. Now, the only con to that is, it's on them. Like, how are they when it comes to borrowing stuff and returning stuff? Like if you say, yeah, I'm going to let you borrow it for two days, but after that, I'm going to need it back. And then five days later, yo, where's the game at? You know, that I mean, that's a con too. But that's mostly on them. Not on you, to some degree, on them. Moving on, with physical copies, you can sell it if you don't, if you get tired of it. Rather. So with a digital copy, once you buy it, you're stuck with it. It's stuck in your system. You can't. Take it out and resell it for profit or anything like that. No, you're stuck with it. While with a physical copy, you can sell it if you get tired of it. So you can sell it to your friend. You can sell it to GameStop. You can sell it to any other retailer. You can sell it. So that's real good thing about getting a physical copy, especially if you buy it and don't think that you may like it or you buy it, you play it, and then you get bored with it. That happens. So why not sell it? And put it towards something else. Which brings me to another point. You can return physical copies. Now this is mostly true for pre-owned games. A.K.A. used games. New ones you can't do that. Like you could get away with it. Depending on who you're working with. But pre-owned games you can definitely do that. Like if you don't like it. Or if you beat it within two or three days or whatever. Then bam. Just return it. You can actually return it. Now another good pro for a physical copy is. You can delete space on your system, and then that game you delete from your system, you can re-download it later. Yeah, so if your system starts to fill up with memory, and you have to make a choice between game A and game B, yeah, I'm going to play game A, I mean play, ah, I'm going to play game A and delete game B for now. And then once you get more room or you get a bigger hard drive, you can grab that disc for game B, re-download it, reinstall it, and boom, you're good to go. You can't do that with a digital copy because once you download it, it's gone. Is it gone for good? I mean, with the PS4, like I said, it got that backup memory or that backup memory thing, so you could re-download it, you know, since you bought it. But I don't know. I don't want to go against it. So there you go with that. Now, another pro that is mostly major but it's somewhat minor as well is the fact that you can pay for your physical copies with cash. Yes, there's some people still who are a little bit fearful and a little bit afraid of paying or using their credit cards and debit cards online because things can be hacked. They've been hacked before. So, but, and you know, with the info on there, because when you purchase something online, you need your credit card info is not enough. They're going to need your name, they're going to need your address. And to some degree, they're going to need your email address and your telephone number. So all that info can potentially be hacked. And the reason why this is most, I say it's mostly major, sometimes minor, is because we've seen this happen before as well. Black Friday, cash registers at Target, I believe, got hacked. So, yeah, buying physical games, you can get messed up as well. But it's more than likely to happen digitally than um, physically. What I mean by that is it more likely to happen when, for you to buy physical games than it is for you to buy physical games. So, yeah, there you go with that. So, with all that out the way, which one should you go with? Well, it depends. If you're buying a game that you know you're going to like and you're going to play it for a long time and you're willing to keep it and you don't mind giving up your credit card info, your debit card info, things of that nature, go digital. Go digital. So, you know, again, you don't have to drive anywhere, waste time driving, standing in lines, and things of that nature. 
it will be installed in your system. And again, as long as you ain't planning on deleting it anytime soon or at all, really, then go digital. Now, again, if you're fearful of using your credit card, debit card online, and you're not sure if you're going to like the game, you're not sure if you're going to keep playing the game for a long time and things of that nature, go physical. I recommend you go physical. So, yeah, I do it both. I go both ways. Now, you probably um, mentioned it, but wait a minute. Is it cheaper to go digital than physical? It depends. If you're going Steam, obviously, yeah. But if you're trying, if you say, oh, let's go to the PSN, the PS Store or the Xbox uh, Live Store or whatever, then it varies. You know, GameStop could have a better deal than Best Buy, Best Buy or the online retailers. But at the same time, the online retailers could have a better deal. So it varies. That's why I'm not listing that as a pro or con for either one because that varies. So yeah, man, as you can see, the game is over and I got player uh, or not player, but I got play of the game. So yeah, with that out the way, y'all know who this is. This is the new Jay Gatsby, aka the new Stephen A. Smith. Say peace out, y'all, and I'll see y'all next time. Yeah. So the number one topic going on right now is basically Pages Sex Tape. That's what they're calling it, and it also features Brad Maddox. And Austin Cree, aka Xavier Woods. So, if you're wondering who Brad Maddox is, Brad Maddox is a former WWE superstar. I, I think he's working in the Indies right now. So he is clearly in the mixtape. I, I yeah, I can actually identify him. And you're probably wondering, wait, man, you sure is it really Paige? Because it could be somebody who just looked like Paige. No, 